All right, this snake is awake and grumpy. Look at that. Oh, it's hissing at us. That is nuts. Good morning, everybody. We are back in South Georgia today, getting ready to do a little bit more controlled burn hiking. North Georgia is really just being slow to wake up this year. We've had a couple of finds up there, but the good stuff seems to largely still not be out yet. So we're once again back down south today because it just has been so good down here. And uh, yeah, you guys know the drill at this point. We're going to be walking around in this area that has recently experienced a prescribed fire, and hopefully we'll see some snakes out. It's our first herp of the day, sleepy green and all. This is always neat. I found the other one over there. And here we have a nice shed from a whitetail. I'm assuming that's the other side all right everyone well we have made it to one o'clock in the afternoon with no snakes almost it's like 12 30 right now i'm not really super concerned about that due to the nature of the habitat we're in today but i will say i think our chances of finding snakes are only going to go up as it gets later in the day and it starts to warm up and dry off a little so all right finally not what i was expecting as our first snake of the day but i'll take it it's a coach whip I know I've said it before, but we've been pretty lucky this year finding very healthy snakes so far, up until kind of recently where we've seen a couple of stinkers. And this guy is definitely a stinker, but he doesn't seem to have anything particularly wrong with him other than being skinny. So hopefully he can capture some lizards or maybe even another snake here in the next couple days and uh, be okay. All right, we will leave this guy right here. He perked up a little bit when he realized I was here, but has not really run off. It's still pretty cool. Not much UV getting through uh, the cloud cover today, despite the fact that it's around 70 degrees. All right, before we go flip 10, we are actually going to try to check up on this diamondback that we saw at the end of 2023. We're going to see if he's hanging out today. I don't have very high expectations, considering there hasn't been anything else out, but that could always just be weird luck. Walk very carefully over here. I don't know where the snake could be. Oh, it's out. Look, right there. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, that's so gorgeous. I'm going to get some quick photos and then we'll get closer look as usual. So we first saw this snake around Christmas time. And it's, it's March 3rd today, I believe. So... This snake has been hanging out here all winter, and I assume it probably won't be hanging out too much longer before it starts to disperse. But that is a gorgeous, big yellow diamondback. Love to see it. So cool to finally see the snake out in the open, too. Sitting right outside his hole. A perfect little pancake. All right, this snake is awake and grumpy. Look at that. Oh, it's hissing at us. That is nuts. I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a little bit intimidating. The snake isn't quite as big as I thought it was when we saw it in the hole, but it's definitely big. I mean, that is a, a normal-sized adult eastern diamondback. They definitely get bigger, but I'd say that's the upper end of what is common to see in this day and age. I've stepped back just a little bit and you can see the snake has already calmed down stopped rattling hopefully it'll continue on with its business but we're going to continue on with ours all right guys well seeing that diamond back out has given me a bit of a second wind i am going to flip a little bit of tin but i think i'm going to walk around this area a little bit more um this stuff right here has been burned recently too and i have not been out to this part of this area yet this year so Pencil lizard. Nice. <laughs> First one of those today. You want to know how wet it's been? Wet enough that this is what the inside of this gopher tortoise's burrow looks like. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Poor dude. All right, guys. We flipped a decent amount of tin here to end the day and did not see anything. But yeah, what a day. 
Definitely a quality over quantity type day, but I cannot complain about that. So awesome to finally get to see that snake after staring at him in a hole for literally months at this point. He finally came out on the day that I was here. Good morning, everybody. This is the first week of March and we are currently heading out to do a little bit of Piedmont herping. It's definitely a little early here and the weather has not been the best, but it's not cold and that's what's important. Supposed to get up to around 70 today and uh, very dense cloud cover. So normally we like dense cloud cover, but this early in the season, it's a little bit cool. But yeah, we'll start off the day by poking around in this creek and then as it warms up, we'll transition into looking for snakes. All right, here's our first redback of the day. I'm not sure if we've seen many of these this year, if any, honestly, they've been kind of absent lately, but uh, fairly common at this spot typically. We'll just let him go back under his log. Here you go, dude. Go on. We got a little double ruber action. Yours is prettier than mine. Look at that. All right, guys. This is a monumental moment. It's March 3rd. We've seen a pine snake, many diamondbacks, many cane breaks, a couple of king snakes. But finally, our first black racer of the year. Richard just flipped under uh, that rock. <laughs> Whoa, hello. A little bit of attitude as usual, but... Very healthy, uh, clean looking snake. Not in shed or anything, just a nice looking racer is our first one of the year. I'll take it. Might end up being the only snake of the day. We flipped a lot of our tin and haven't seen anything until this point, so. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I've seen a couple already. All right, there's a couple of sliders out there, which I'm not getting a great look at, but that turtle that's closest to us. That is our first painted turtle of the year, Eastern painted turtle at least. This thing is actually surprisingly tolerant of me getting closer to him. We might actually get a decent look at this one. All right, well, we're probably gonna call it a day here, but here are two more redbacks. A couple of common species for the first time this year today. That one is actually really odd looking. He's got a very, very monocolor pattern on him. Look at that. And then there's a more typical one. All right, everybody, we are doing the rain thing again. Uh, it's just been frustratingly rainy over the last couple of weeks, and it's it's no different today. We've got supposedly morning rain showers. I'm going to try to get out despite the rain and maybe flip some rocks and hopefully see something under rocks. But the rain has been a persistent issue over the last couple of weeks, and that's not something you usually hear me say because I am typically of the belief that more rain is a good thing. But you can hear there's a nice assortment of frogs calling peepers, upland chorus frogs, and a, uh, a mountain chorus frog or two in there too. But yeah, hopefully this rain will let up at some point soon and we can go flip some rocks. First herp of the day. I think that is a uh, redback salamander. Let's see if we can uncover his head. There we go. Probably not a great sign for snakes, but I'm happy to see him. What? Are you serious? Why is there a rattlesnake right there? Well, I mean, it's like 55 degrees and actively drizzling and there's a timber. And on top of that, it's gorgeous, super light. It's definitely got a little bit of blister action going, but that thing is stunning. Y'all know me, you know I love this species. And uh, I've spent quite a bit of time looking for them in this region and I've never successfully found one in habitat before today. I have seen one curled up on top of one of my pieces of tin out here. But uh, actually finding one coiled in natural habitat like this is the first time I've ever done it. That is insane, and it's actively raining right now. Well, hopefully this can be a learning experience for uh, two kinds of viewers. The ones who want to see snakes and the ones who don't. <laughs> they can be out pretty much whenever. Hey, this big red back. These guys seem to be the only things under rocks today. Man, we're finding all the sheds this year. Look at that. Just see the one side. Very nice. Sure wish we could find one of those guys, but they're pretty dang tough to spot calling in all that grass. But yeah, first ring neck of the day. Well, we ended up having a few snakes today despite the weather. We still got a little bit left to do, but nice red-bellied snake right here. I'm gonna 
pull this guy out and we'll put his rock back. But let's see what he's got going on. Pretty typical. Not super vibrant, but definitely a very pretty little snake. I honestly can't remember if we've seen one of these in 2024 yet. This might be our first one. I know we haven't seen many if we have. They uh, have been surprisingly absent lately. So are brown snakes. But uh, yeah, we'll just uh, let him go. Put him on top of the rock and see where he goes here. He's gonna wanna, yeah, there he goes. You know, despite the, uh, the absence of snakes compared to what I feel like today would be like if it was actually a little bit sunny, it's hard to beat the vibes of a rainy spring day in the woods. Look at this, it's beautiful out here. There's a nice little southern two-line salamander. Haven't shown one in a while. Whoop, there he goes. Back to the leaf litter. So I heard a rodent scream, and I started over here. And sure enough, right there is a corn snake constricting a mouse. The second time we've seen this with a corn snake. That is just nuts. You got it by the tail, bud. Oh gonna go looking for the head I think let's see what he does hopefully he doesn't get spooked by me uh watching him <laughs> that's so sick he's definitely suspicious of me but he's still got that rodent wrapped up so hopefully he will go back and finish it we'll see all right he already killed it and now he seems to be largely focused on me but I'm gonna try to do this just to see if he'll bite it again oh and then hopefully his uh, his feeding response will kick back in and he'll be less scared. There you go. That's what you want, right? That's what you want. You already killed it. Now you gotta eat it, dude. There you go. I promise I don't wanna hurt you. I just want you to eat your meal. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Looks like he's finally starting to eat it. I have to be very careful not to move too suddenly because I don't want to scare him again and make him drop it. That is so cool. With the mountain chorus frogs calling in the back. <laughs> All right, guys, rain is really picking up again, so I wanted to move on before I risked scaring that snake again before he could finish eating that mouse. But holy cow, that is so crazy to see something like that. And we've seen that with corn snakes twice now. I also definitely recommend if you ever see something like that to not do what I did and interfere. But the only reason I actually ended up touching that mouse at all was to make sure the corn snake's uh, feeding response re-engaged after he got scared by me walking up. Definitely not ideal, but rat snakes have very strong feeding responses and I'm pretty confident that he will finish that rodent in peace now that I have left. All right, guys, I am making my way back to the car. It has been a, oh, toad eggs. Look at that. The forbidden spaghetti of the seepage. Hard to really get any better than that. A timber, a couple of little fossorial snakes, and a big corn snake eating a cotton rat. I do think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's wet but productive outing, and I will see you all in the next episode.